Good morning and welcome to another session of Daily Jesus. And today we're going to continue reading through the book of 1 Kings from chapters 5 to 7 today. Now, the, now that the, uh, King Solomon does not forget the pleas from his um, now our dead father David. David had previously asked for Solomon to build a temple for the Lord. So Solomon prepares for the construction by importing expensive timber from the neighboring country of Tyre. At the time, relations between Israel and Tyre were, was rather good, and the king of Tyre, Hiram, was overjoyed when he heard that, um, that the wishes of David were now being fulfilled. And so the preparations for the construction ensued with the support from Hiram. Now, something interesting to note here is, however, is that the building of the temple, the construction of the temple, lasted only mere but seven years, but Solomon's construction for his castle lasted 13 years. Regardless, the ensuing chapters from chapter 6 to 7 record the details of the construction of the temple and details as to what was to be placed inside the temple and decoration and relics, things to be used in worship. When the construction of the temple was complete, Solomon marks the finale to the construction by placing different golden and silver objects and furniture um, that belonged to his father David inside the temple. And so keeping this in mind, let us all continue reading from the book of 1 Kings today. 1 Kings chapter 5 Now Hiram king of Tyre sent his servants to Solomon when he had heard that they had anointed him king in place of his father, for Hiram always loved David. And Solomon sent word to Hiram, You know that David, my father, could not build a house for the name of the Lord his God because of the warfare with which his enemies surrounded him, until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor misfortune. And so I intend to build a house for the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord said to David my father, your son, whom I will set your throne in your place, shall build the house for my name. Now therefore, command that the cedars of Lebanon be cut for me, and my servants will join your servants, and I will pay you for your servants such wages as you set. For you know that there is no one among us who knows how to cut timber like the Sidonians. As soon as Hiram heard the words of Solomon, he rejoiced greatly and said, Blessed be the Lord this day, who has given to David a wise son to be over his great people. And Hiram sent to Solomon, saying, I have heard the message that you have sent to me. I am ready to do all your desire in the matter of cedar and cypress timber. My servant shall bring down to the sea from Lebanon, and I will make it into rafts to go by sea to the place you direct, and I will have them broken up there, and you shall receive it, and you shall meet my wishes by providing food for my household. So Hiram supplied Solomon with all the timber of cedar and cypress that he desired. While well, Solomon gave Hiram 20,000 cores of wheat as food for his household and 20,000 cores of beaten oil, Solomon gave this to Hiram year by year. And the Lord gave Solomon wisdom, as he promised him. And there was peace between Hiram and Solomon, and the two of them made a treaty. King Solomon drafted a forced labor out of all Israel, and a draft numbered 30,000 men. And he sent them to Lebanon, 10,000 a month in shifts. There would be a month in Lebanon, and two months at home. Adoniram was in charge of the draft. Solomon also had 70,000 burden bearers and 80,000 stone cutters in the hill country, besides Solomon's 3,300 chief officers who were over the work, who had charge of the people who carried on the work. At the king's command, they quarried out great costly stones in order to lay the foundation of the house with the dressed stones. So Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders and the men of Gebel did the cutting and prepared the timber and the stone to build the house. Chapter 6 In the 480th year, after the people of Israel came out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziv, which is the second month, he began to build a house of the Lord. The house that King Solomon built for the Lord was 60 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. The vestibule front of the nave of the house was 20 cubits long, equal to the width of the house, and ten cubits deep in front of the house, and he made for the house windows with recessed frame. He also built a structure against the wall of the house, running in around the walls of the house, both the nave and the inner sanctuary. 
he made side chambers all around. The lowest story was five cubits broad, the middle one was six cubits broad, and the third was seven cubits broad. For around the outside of the house, he made offsets on the wall in order that the supporting beam should not be inserted into the walls of the house. When the house was built, it was a stone prepared at the quarry, so that neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron was heard in the house while it was being built. The entrance for the lower story was on the south side of the house, and one went up by the stairs to the middle story, and from the middle story to the third. So he built the house and finished it, and he made the ceiling of the house of beams and planks of cedar. He built a structure against the whole house, five cubits high, and it was joined to the house with timbers of cedar. Now the word of the Lord came to Solomon, Concerning this house that you are building, if you will walk in my statutes and obey my rules and keep all my commandments and walk in them, then I will establish my word with you, which I spoke to David your father. And I will dwell among the children of Israel, and will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon built the house and finished it. He lined the walls of the house on the inside with boards of cedar, from the floor of the house to the walls of the ceiling. He covered them on the inside with wood, and he covered the floor of the house with boards of cypress. He built twenty cubits of the rear of the house with boards of cedar from the floor to the walls, and he built this within as in a sanctuary, as the most holy place. The house, that is, the nave in the front of the inner sanctuary, was forty cubits long. The cedar within the house was carved in the form of gourds and open flowers. All was cedar, no stone was seen. The inner sanctuary prepared in the most inner part of the house, to set there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. The inner sanctuary was twenty cubits long, twenty cubits wide, and two and a cubits high, and he overlaid it with pure gold. He also overlaid an altar of cedar. And Solomon overlaid the inside of the house with pure gold, and he drew chains of gold across in front of the inner sanctuary, and overlaid it with gold. And he overlaid the whole house with gold, until all the house was finished. Also the whole altar that belonged to the inner sanctuary, he overlaid it with gold. In the inner sanctuary he made two cherubim of olive wood, each ten cubits high. Five cubits was the length of one wing of the cherub, and five cubits the length of other wing of the cherub. It was ten cubits from the tip of one wing to the tip of the other. The other cherub also measured ten cubits. Both cherubim had the same measure and the same form. The height of one cherub was ten cubits, and so was that of the other cherub. He put the cherubim in the innermost part of the house, and the wings of the cherubim were spread out, so that a wing of one touched the one wall, and a wing of the other cherub touched the other wall. Their other wings touched each other in the middle of the house, and he overlaid the cherubim with gold. Around all the walls of the house he carved engraved figures of cherubim and palm trees and open flowers in the inner and outer rooms. The floor of the house he overlaid it with gold in the inner and outer rooms. For the entrance to the inner sanctuary he made doors of olive wood. The lintel and the doorpost were five-sided. He covered the two doors of olive wood with carvings of cherubim, palm trees and open flowers. He overlaid them with gold and spread gold on the cherubim and on the palm trees. So also he made for the entrance to the nave doorposts of olive wood in the form of a square and two doors of cypress wood. The two leaves of the one door were folding and the two leaves of the other door were folding. On them he carved cherubim and palm trees and open flowers and he overlaid them with gold evenly applied on the carved work. He built the inner court with three courses of cut stone and one course of cedar beams. In the fourth year of the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid, in the month of Ziv. And in the eleventh year, in the month of Bull, which is the eighth month, the house was finished in all its parts and according to all its specifications. He was seven years in building it. Chapter 7 Solomon was building his own house thirteen years, and he finalized his entire house. He built the house of the forest of Lebanon, 
Its length was 100 cubits, and its breadth 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. And it was built on four rows of cedar pillars, with cedar beams on the pillars. And it was covered with cedar above the chambers, that were on 45 pillars, 15 in each row. There were window frames in three rows, and a window frame opposite window in three tiers. All the doorways and the windows had square frames, and window was opposite window in three tiers. And he made the whole of pillars, its length was 50 cubits, and its breadth 30 cubits. There was a porch in front with pillars, and a canopy in front of them. And he made the hall of the throne, where he was to pronounce judgment, even the hall of judgment. It was finished with cedar from floor to rafters. His own house, where he was to dwell in the other court back of the hall, was of like workmanship. Solomon also made a house like this hall for Pharaoh's daughter whom he had taken in marriage. All these were made of costly stones cut according to measure, sword with saws, back and front, even from the fountain to the coping and from outside to the great court. The foundation was of costly stones, huge stones, stones of eight and ten cubits, and above were costly stones cut according to measurement in cedar. The great court had three courses of cut stone all around, and a course of cedar beams, so it had the inner court of the house of the Lord and the vestibule of the house. And King Solomon sent and brought Hiram from Tyre. He was a son of a widow of the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was man of Tyre, a worker in bronze, and he was a full wisdom understanding and skill for making any work in bronze. He came to King Solomon and did all his work. He cast two pillars of bronze, 18 cubits was the height of one pillar, and a line of 12 cubits measured in circumference. It was hollow, and its thickness was four fingers. The second pillar was the same. He also made two capitals of cast bronze to set on the tops of the pillars. The height of one capital was five cubits, and the height of the other capital was five cubits. There were lattices of checkerwork with wreaths of chain for work for capitals on the top of the pillars, a lattice for one capital and a lattice for the other capital. Likewise, he made pomegranates in two rows around one lattice work to cover the capital that was on the top of the pillar, and he did the same with the other capital. Now the capitals that were on the tops of the pillars in the vestibule were of lily work, four cubits. The capitals were on the two pillars and also above the rounded projection which was beside the lattice work. There were 200 pomegranates in two rows all around and so with the other capital. He set up the pillars at the vestibule of the temple. He set up the pillar on the south and called his name Jachin, and he set up the pillar on the north and called its name Boaz. And on the tops of the pillars was lily work, thus the work of the pillars was finished. Then he made the sea of cast metal. It was round, ten cubits from brim to brim, and five cubits high, and a line of thirty cubits measured in its circumference. Under its brim were gourds for ten cubits, compassing the sea all around. The gourds were in two rows, cast with it when it was cast. It stood on twelve oxen, three facing north, three facing west, three facing south, and three facing east. The sea was set on them, and all their rear parts were inward. Its thickness was a hand breadth, and its brim was like the brim of a cup. Like the flower of a lily, it held two thousand baths. He also made ten stands of bronze. Each stand was four cubits long, four cubits wide, and three cubits high. This was the construction of the stands. They had panels, and the panels were set in the frames. And on the panels that were set in the frames were lions, oxen, and cherubim. On the frames, both above and below the lions and oxen, there were wreaths of beveled work. Moreover, each stand had four bronze wheels, axles of bronze, and at four corners were supports of a basin. The supports were cast with wreaths at the side of each. Its opening was within a crown that was projected upwards one cubit. Its opening was round as a pedestal is made. 
or cubit and a half deep. And its opening there were carvings, and its panels were square, not round. And the four wheels were underneath the panels. The axles of the wheels were on one piece with stands, and the height of a wheel was a cubit and a half. The wheels were made like a chariot wheel. Their axles, their rims, their spokes, and their hubs were all cast. There were four supports at the four corners of each stand. The supports were of one piece with the stands. And on the top of the stand, there was a round band a half a cubit high. And on the top of the stand, it stays and its panels were of one piece with it. And on the surface of its stays and on its panels, he carved cherubim, lions, and palm trees, according to the space of each, with wreaths all around. After this manner he made ten stands, all of them were cast alike, of the same measure and of the same form. And he had made ten basins of bronze, each basin held forty baths, each basin measured four cubits, and there were a basin for each of the ten stands. And he set the stands five on the south side of the house, and five on the north side of the house, and he had set the sea at the southeast corner of the house. Hiram also made the pots, the shovels, and the basins. So Hiram finished all the work that he did for King Solomon on the house of the Lord. The two pillars, the two bowls of the capitals that were on the tops of the pillars, the two lattice works to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on the tops of the pillars, and the four hundred pomegranates for the two lattice works, two rows of pomegranates for each lattice work to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on the pillars the ten stands, the ten basins on the stands, and one sea, and the twelve oxen underneath the sea. Now the pots, the shovels, and the basins, all these vessels in the house of the Lord, which Hiram made for King Solomon, were of burnished bronze. In the plain of the Jordan the king cast them, in the clay ground between Succoth and Zerathon. And Solomon left all the vessels unweighed, because there were so many of them, the weight of the bronze were not ascertained. So Solomon made all the vessels that were in the house of the Lord, the golden altar, the golden table for the bread of the presence, the lampstands of pure gold, five on the south side and the five on the north, therefore in a sanctuary, the flowers, the lamps, and the tongs of gold, the cups, snuffers, basins, dishes for the incense, and fire pans of pure gold, and the sockets of gold, for the doors of the innermost part of the house, the most holy place, and for the doors of the nave of the temple. Thus all the work that King Solomon did on the house of the Lord was finished, and Solomon brought in the things that David his father had dedicated, the silver, the gold, and the vessels, and stored them in the treasury of the house of the Lord. Amen. Keeping what we've just read in mind, here are some application questions that will help you meditate on what we've just read. Firstly, what is something that you are learning new or are being reminded of again through today's reading and passage? Secondly, why do you think it took Solomon 13 years to build his castle, but a mere seven for his temple? What does this show us today? We are all also God's temple. Are you living a life that's worthy of this identity? And what is something that you could see or that you can consider in your life that is not worthy as being a temple? And finally, as always, how is the passage today leading you to a moment of conviction and repentance? Meditating on these questions, let's all end today's session with a prayer. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you that through Jesus Christ and uh, the, the power and the movement of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of your own spirit into our lives, that you use us as uh, the temples for your own very kingdom. Uh, Father, we pray that um, according to this identity that uh, we can profess and we can claim and proclaim that uh, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me and uh, to be used and to be able to offer our entire our lives up to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ um, who uh, gave his life up for us. Uh, Father, allow us to be able to uh, live our lives um, worthy uh, as a living sacrifice, uh, worthy of the call, upward call in Christ Jesus and use us today um, to be able to proclaim that news that uh, of hope and mercy and grace to all who need to hear it today. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I do hope and pray that today we can all live as the holy temples of the Lord. Embrace Jesus. Embrace people.